Hello and welcome to a quick start guide for stationers in 2024. Um, I know uh, some of you may have seen my previous quick start guide in made in 2022. Quite a lot has changed in the game since then. So uh, in this guide, in the, the first 60 minutes, I'm going to show you how you're going to have a base. You're going to have your first water, you're going to have your first food growing, you're going to have a breathable atmosphere, and you're going to have made your first steel all in the first 60 minutes. But there's no time to waste, so let's go. Okay, so starting off, what have we got on the lander? So the first thing we can see on the lander is we've got uh, crates, construction supplies, one and two. These are the things we're going to use to build the base, so let's get going. Um, iron frames. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, noticing... Um, where the sun is. Not quite sure what's going on with the landscape there. There we go. For some reason that decided not to draw in. Um, the sun is rising over this way so um, I'm going to orientate my base in that direction. So I'm going to take this bit of flat ground here. I'm going to move just a little bit clear of the lander because it interferes with the building. I'm going to go one, two, three. Um, actually I'm going to come back one from there. So that's going to be three by five we're going to lay out here. Whoops. Okay, and then in the middle row I'm going to put one frame there, I'm going to put one frame there. It will become clear later why I have done that. The rest of these frames we will use down there in a little while. Okay, so on this crate here uh, we have also got uh, some iron sheets. Um, some glass which I'm going to pop in there uh, and we've got some iron walls which I'm going to grab there. Um, now I'm also just going to tidy up my inventory a bit so I'm going to put the atmosphere analyzer into my tablet because that's really useful. Uh, I'm going to temporarily put a couple of these other things into here um, because we don't need them yet. We may not need them at all. Uh, I don't think I've ever used the uh, network analyzer. Actually it's not quite true but uh, we certainly don't need it immediately. Right let's get the foundations laid. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the walls in there. I'm going to grab the welder. Uh, you can hold down the alt key to drag things which you'll find a lot easier than uh, uh, moving using the keyboard. Um, right and if you right click you'll turn something on. So I'm going to single weld these so just hold them down until they've got one weld on them. Turn my jetpack off, partly for the noise and partly for the fuel. Um, so single weld, single weld, single weld. This one in here I'm double welding. And the same with these. Oops. Double weld this one, and I'm going to um, hold that one back for a minute. So I'm going to put the welder away, and I'm going to grab the walls. Uh, so let's get the walls put up. So we're going to start with the roof, just because that was the way they happened to be orientated. So you'll see I'm putting them on the bottom of the block above. Um, uh, you can kind of do it either way. Um, but that's the way it was orientated, so that's what we'll do. We'll put those there, and we'll go along the edge here. One, two, three, and we'll put that end on there. Okay, so um, that's all of those we're going to need for a little while. So I'm going to drop that. I'm going to pop some sheets on here. And there we go. And I'm going to do the roof. One, two... Three, four. The reason I'm building this size rather than any bigger, by the way, is because the starting materials are fairly limited, and if you build things that are too big, you'll find you don't quite have enough to do what you want. Right, now, uh, I am going to grab um, a power controller, uh, and I'm going to grab the solar panel, and I'm going to grab the solid generator. Um, and that will be enough to get me going for the next stage, so let's go do that. So you can see we've already got the sort of basic frame of the thing here. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'll pop that down for a minute, 
is um, actually I'm going to put the glass in some of these windows, not all of them, but I'm going to put the roof because it's easy to forget about the roof or miss a panel. So I'm going to do that very systematically now. So now I've done all seven before I start. There we go. And I'm going to put this side in. And I'm finally I'm going to put that back edge in. But I'm leaving this wall here open, and that's because I'm going to bring some things in before I seal that hab up. I'm going to need those glass sheets in a minute, so I shall leave them there. Right, now I want to put the solar panel on the roof of that, but before I do, I've got a bit of work to do before I seal up that frame. Um, so I'm going to wire up what we're going to need for the airlock. Now you can use a manual airlock to get started. Um, I actually just quite like building the electrical airlock straight off the bat. Um, it will save a bit of time later. Whoops, I cannot get that in the right place. Okay, there we go. Right, so I'm going to whoops, swing that around there. Uh, in fact, I think that will need to come one further off there so it doesn't interfere with the door. Whoops. Um, and this will go, hang on actually, I need to do this, I can work out where this goes by setting this up. So this comes down here, and it starts coming down the middle, but then we actually have to move it across one in order to fit with where we're going to put the APC in a minute. Down there, down there down there, this will all make much more sense in a moment. Um, and then that cable, no that in fact was right, with one less on there. So snip that off and that one there goes, whoops, I can't find the end point now. Comes through there, down there, there we go, right, okay. Wah. Down there and down there. Okay, so that's the wiring that needs to go inside that. So let's get that put away and let's get this welded up. Okay, that's good. That's the last thing we need to do inside there. Right, I'm going to lay the cabling in the airlock next. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to go across, whoops, across here. here, up here, and we're going to put one there, one there, and a little curve on the end, and then over here we're going to go there, we're going to go th whoops, there, perhaps if we press the right button we're going to go there, and we're going to do that, and that's not right. I should have put a T-junction. You can use the wire cutters um, to uh, join two bits of wire together like that. Um, whoops! And you can also put tools away really quickly with a quick double tap on the um, F key and it will put them into your inventory um, and then that will get you things very quickly put away. Right, we need the door now. Whoops, I'm also going to want some of the other bits for the airlock. Um, so let's grab the door, the sensors, whoops, double double F again, and just get it away. And you'll see if I try and do it when there's no space in my inventory it won't work. But I can still pick stuff up. Right, okay, so we're gonna come in here. And I'm going to put the active vent there. I'm gonna put the consoles there. I'm going to put the uh, sensors which are here and I'm going to use the mouse wheel to roll that over until it says gas sensor I press C and it will align to the cable and it goes in there uh, now doors doors we're gonna have uh, delete to spin that round put one in there till it goes yellow and one in there and you'll see those are perfectly aligned with all those cables almost like I've done this before. Right, now um, I'm going to get a solar panel on the roof. I was hoping I might get it done before it gets dark, but well, we'll get the solar panel, but um, there won't be anything for it to charge, but at least that's on. Put some glass on it, and that's complete. And we're going to pick up the power controller, and I'm going to put one there facing, notice the direction of the arrows in and out, and I'm going to put the other one 
here. So I'm actually going to snip out one piece of wire here, which I just put in as a placeholder. Uh, Restack that, drag it so until it stacks. Um, and again, and this is pointing downwards, and that's important. Um, let's turn the jetpack off. Um, it's important, it's pointing downwards because it's going to take the power in from here and through there. And this bit here, by the way, will have a junction on it to there this will have a junction facing that way to there. So we're going to use the crowbar just to open both of those and I'm going to flick the on switch because nothing happens without them being turned on. Um, now this is going to be the battery backup for this airlock so if the main battery runs out we've still got the power to open and shut the doors we don't get shut in. This is initially going to be our only real battery supply. It's not brilliant but it's what we've got so it's what we're going to use. I'm going to take the solid generator and put it there so it's yellow and you'll see it's really tightly in. I've used the minimum amount of wire that I need to and then I'm going to run the rest of the wire across one, two, three, four, five and then uh, I'm going to turn here and here here and that's because I'm going to be putting some printers over that side. Okay now the uh, next thing we can do is actually to uh, bring the stuff we need into the hab through that open wall uh, and then we'll close it up. And the reason I want to do that early on is that uh, growing food does take a bit of time. I'm going to grab these two machines while I'm on here uh, and I'm going to grab those because plastic sheets because I'm going to need them in a minute. Now if we look at the other stuff we've got on here um, we will need those pipes so I'm going to grab those um, and if I've got space anywhere which I haven't we kind of need that battery so that will just have to go in there for a minute. Right now this green organic supplies is an important crate. This contains all our seeds. They're um, until you can get a trader basically irreplaceable so um, don't lose them. Stuff you leave on the lander can be destroyed in a storm um, on a normal difficulty I think it now only takes a single storm to destroy the lander and if the lander is destroyed anything still attached to it is lost. Ah. Now you can see this is actually quite fiddly to get this to go in here this is why I wanted to do it before I started closing up the doors because at least it's a reasonably big hole and I'm still managing to mess it up take that in there, cue to drop it, fly back out. Next thing we're going to want off the lander is that nice big white oxygen tank. That is our main oxygen supply so again not something we want to lose. Wait till it stops moving, pick it up. Carrying these big objects you need to be a bit careful by the way. Um, if you pick them up when they're too close to something they sometimes clip through, um, they can damage a space so they can cause all sorts of destruction so be very careful with them. Uh, right, let's get that in there. Um, okay, so in terms of the other things that are on here, uh, we've got portable appliance kits. There's some things in there we need, um, but we can manage without the whole crate. Uh, construction supplies, obviously, we've already looked at. But there's another yellow crate here called residential supplies. This is our food, water, and it's also a microwave for cooking later. We'll need that inside. Um, unless you're on easy difficulty, you can't. Whoops press the wrong button. You can't eat or drink whilst your helmet is closed and obviously you ain't going to be opening your helmet out in space. Now I'm doing this one on Mars because following the phase change mechanics um, update um, actually Mars is slightly easier than the moon because on the moon there's no atmosphere so the hot and cold is very harsh. It's very binary uh, and it's very easy as a result to um, get into a state where things break just because the uh, temperatures e uh, extremes are, are quite high. Right, that is enough in terms of the big things I need to bring in, so I'm going to seal those two bits up there. I'm going to just hold down on the glass and just scan all those joints just to make sure nothing goes yellow and starts to seal, so that's all done. Fantastic. Right. Okay, so um, now I'm going to uh, grab the plastic sheets. Um, and actually I'm going to get that battery and I'm going to stick it in there. That will use as our spare suit battery in a minute. That just gets it out of the way. Welder. And it's two plastic sheets for each one. Um, no, it's not. It's one even. Um, now we will need those plastic sheets for some other stuff, so I'm going to leave them in the airlock. Um, and then if I get the crowbar and 
some glass sheets you'll see I can now close that in close that in there we go and that's not really an airlock yet because I can still open both doors which is fine because I've got some more stuff to take off the lander but it's about to become one however before we do that I've got a couple of things I need to build so the first thing I need to do is to get this printer in place now I'm going to put this really quite tight up to the wall here um, it's a bit fiddly to load it later on you'll want to move it a little bit that way probably but um, wire is one of the most easy things to uh, run out of in the early build so everything is being put as close together as I can get away with so I'm going to put oops I'm going to put that one there and again make sure you do the furnace the right way around now the furnace is basically ready to go immediately um, so that's just built and done um, however the printer actually needs to be constructed um, so let's get the cable right way around and pressing um, C just to rotate it through its different configurations eventually it'll find the right one sometimes it's smarter than other times right okay so to make that I'm going to need um, the iron sheets which I uh, put somewhere um, and I'm going to need the plastic sheets so iron sheets are in my inventory there and a welder turn that on do that okay but put that away I need cable coil I need four of them and this is why it's easy to run out you see I've only got four left now um, and then I need to put the iron sheets away get the hand welder weld up with some plastic sheets that's the one that needs two um, I'm not going to need them for a little while throw them in there for a minute um, and a screwdriver and apply the screwdriver and boom there we go our first machine is up and running our smelter is up and running um, and in fact I'm reasonably confident that we've got enough frames I'm going to actually do this and add a bit more space up here um, which will be helpful later and I'm going to put another one up there which the purpose of which will become more obvious later on and I'm going to throw that in there now I'm going to try to get anything else critical off that lander so that's useful because it's got a battery in um, the flares are potentially useful but really that's all optional cosmetic stuff there's an advanced airlock circuit board um, it's a nice upgrade but it's not essential um, in this one though we have got a few things that we probably want to keep um, we're certainly going to want the scrubber portable scrubber um, we are certainly going to want the portable hydroponics um, we're also going to want these batteries uh, and I haven't actually got enough space but we will also need that water and I would suggest the uh, duct tape is pretty important as well so um, I'm going to get some of these in here and I'm just literally going to dump them in here for a minute um, I'm going to drop this which will deploy and we can use that to charge batteries if we need to I know it's inside but it will work um, glass sheets we're going to need in a minute to finish that airlock um, those sheets I'm going to need right okay so I'm going to do the rest of the airlock now so I'm going to put a pipe up there um, and I'm going to get up on the roof and I'm going to lay this pipe so it's going to be a corner then a corner that way then a corner down that way and then I'm going to come back inside and I'm going to lay a straight piece of pipe down there so what you end up with is a piece of pipe that basically goes up curves around and comes back down now when we vacuum out this airlock it's going to compress the uh, gas that's in there into this pipe um, and that should have enough capability to, to do that a few times without bursting the pipe if the pipe does burst it's most likely to overpressure and burst on this bottom segment which will cause what was in here to leak into here um, which in in the case of Mars basically is almost certainly going to be Martian atmosphere um, uh, sorry the base atmosphere um, because the Martian atmosphere is very thin so um, that should be fine um, let's go get everything else we need um, so let's come around here I'm going to grab some duct tape um, right we do need the airlock circuit board we need that um, disk for programming as well so that's the absolute essentials you'll see the sun's just coming up on day two We've still got some stuff on the lander, um, but you shouldn't get a storm for the first few days. 
Um, so that's a good start. The airlock circuit board goes in, we grab the glass, we put the glass on top. I'll throw that in there to get it out of the way. Now I've got the uh, disc that I had here, so I'm going to um, put that into the slot that's inside. It's quite hard to see. Uh, I'm going to put a battery into there. I'm going to turn that on. Right, now what I'm going to do is actually configure this airlock. So we need to, we've got a vent and a sensor, those are easy. We need to set the doors up. One will be interior, one will be exterior. Um, whichever one you click first, um, it will set to the exterior and you'll see, as very often happens, it's the wrong one and you can tell because it's the one that goes red. So just click it again, it's gone back to green. Um, and it's one of these things where there's a 50% chance of getting it right or wrong and I get it wrong every time. Right, once they're all set, the doors one of the, well, the doors will shut by themselves and the airlock will try to start running. You need to take the disc out to get hold of the controller. I'm just going to drop it on the floor in here. It's a bit untidy. Now, it's trying to pressurise at the moment, but there's no gas in that pipe to pressurise with, so it's not going to manage to do it. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and while I'm in here, I'm going to set up a couple of kits because um, it will take a bit of time to... Uh, get anything growing in here so the sooner we start uh, the sooner we finish let's throw that over there for a minute um, we will put some furniture in here to tidy up but possibly not by the end of this video uh, right so I set the scrubber and the hydroponics up I'm going to put battery in the scrubber and I'm going to put the water in the hydroponics I'm not going to do much more with that for a minute I'm certainly not turning that on because there's no filters but the air temperature in here will start to warm up and that will help the water to acclimatise to a sensible temperature as well. Um, which means quite soon we'll be able to start thinking about planting things. But if I grab this tablet, you'll remember I put the atmospherics circuit board in here. You'll see what we've got at the moment is a very thin atmosphere, 95% CO2, really small amount of nitrogen, even smaller amount of oxygen and a bit of pollutant. But that even small amount of pollutant is enough to really affect our plant growth so we don't want that. Let's get outside. We're going to have to go mining now um, because basically um, we have grabbed about as much stuff as we can usefully use from the lander so I'm just going to clear as much space as I can in my inventory. Um, I'm just using Q just to throw things in that airlock. It's a bit untidy but at least it will stay put. Uh, not good if there's a storm, but we shouldn't have one for a little while. Now I'm going to swap belts to the mining belt. I'm going to grab the uh, drill and I'm going to hit that hill. So there's a few things we're specifically looking for. First of all, coal is going to be essential initially because we've got one solar panel, but coal is going to be a major power source for us in very early game. Uh, luckily there's a seam of it right here, so I'm going to grab as much of that as I reasonably can, but conscious of time. Um, however, we're uh, about a quarter of an hour in, I would guess, and we've got the basis um, of our uh, hab constructed, so that's a good start. Um, so we're going to mine up um, whatever coal vein we can find in here. I've got 28 so far. I really probably want a little bit over 50, um, because we are going to use for power, but really if I can get a bit more that would be great because we're going to also need it for steel later on as well. Steel uses uh, one part of coal to three parts of iron um, in the furnace which we don't yet have um, but we will do soon I promise. Um, so the more I can gather now the better because mining in daytime is clearly a lot easier than mining when it gets dark um, not least because you can see the ores from further away but also you're less likely to get lost and particularly when you're new to the game uh, on, it's uh, definitely a hazard I mean it's not too bad on Mars because you tend to get large open planes as you can see so we can see the base lights from some distance but um, if you're playing on for example Europa where you get very high mountain effects um, because of the low gravity it's uh, very easy to get to a state where there's no line of sight to your base and you've lost your bearings. There is a compass down in the bottom right um, which you can use to uh, get an idea and fly by dead reckoning in the night. Um, it's durable, it's not particularly stress-free and fun. Right, I'm going to take some of this nitrice. Nitrice is super useful because it's mostly nitrogen, 
nitrogen is an important buffer gas as it is in Earth's atmosphere. Um, it stops it being really high uh, oxygen and really high oxygen is really flammable. So as we warm it up, oxygen will eventually auto ignite. But if we mix any volatiles into it by accident, you've got a real problem. Um, so uh, for uh, buffering the HAB, we use nitrogen. Uh, we can also use some carbon dioxide um, in real life it's toxic in relatively low um, quantities um, in stationaries it's not and we do need it for plant growth but um, it is good to have nitrogen and nitrogen also uh, is good if you're on a cold planet because uh, it has a low freezing point whereas carbon dioxide actually um, freezes at only about minus 45 celsius um, which is a problem Right, I'm going to run up this hill and see what else I can see. There's some more nitrice, so we'll take that. There's quite a bit here. Um, I probably need about 80. It's probably enough. So I'm about there with that. That'll be fine. Right, there's some water ice. We're going to need that, obviously, to make water. Um, there's also some silver. Now, we don't need that for very early game, but it's always worth remembering where silver is because it's one of the rarest um, deposits that you'll find. Uh, right, I think that's enough water for the sake of this uh, initial demo. Right, there's some more coal. Um, so, the things we really need, we know we are going to need more iron. We always need plenty of iron, but also copper. And there's a copper deposit right there. That's handy. Um, but you'll notice that we were nearly out of copper cable, so uh, clearly we're going to need more of that. We're going to need it for making many of the machines, um, which are often a combination of copper and iron. And we also need, I was just about to say, some trace amounts of gold. And look, there is some right there as well. Um, different materials take different amounts of time to mine. Copper is the second fastest after iron. Um, gold is frustratingly slow to mine um, and uh, you see we've got the hydration warning so I'm getting a bit thirsty already um, that will be okay um, I'm on 19% you can see down at the bottom um, but that's okay uh, my health will start to drop once it gets to zero but that will give me a bit more time obviously I'm not going to take my helmet off out here um, but uh, back to gold. Gold is frustrating because in real life it's very soft metal and very easy to mine. Or maybe not to uh, actually purify, but it is very soft. Um, and uh, in stationaries it's about the hardest substance there is when you come to take it out of something. So it uh, seems a bit weird, but there we go. Um, now I think I'm going to need a bit more gold than I've got here. Probably about 20. Um, so I'm just going to try and see what else I can find and then I'm going to have to go and find some iron. This is a reasonable vein of gold, that's a good start. Oh, we've got plenty of copper so that's really good, much more than we need actually I think um, for uh, certainly the scope of this uh, initial tutorial but uh, let's see how we go. Um, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, how are we doing? I don't think there's any more gold left in that vein. Um, so I guess we'll have to make do with what we did have, which may well be enough. Okay, so the other thing I need to do is to find some iron, which is actually slightly difficult to spot on. Oh, there we are. And there is some. I was going to say on Mars because it's a very similar colour to the ground. Unsurprisingly, because as in real life, Mars is um, obviously... Um, heavily made of iron. Now I didn't have space on the mining belt so instead of it going into the mining belt this stuff's now rolling away down the hill so I'm just trying to make some space by dragging these onto my backpack. Um, what you don't want to do is walk around with ice in your hand because ice in your hand will melt uh, and off gas um, if the temperature is above freezing. Um, it's not so bad with ores. Um, you know, those ones on the other hand have already rolled off down the hill and I frankly can't be bothered to go fetch them. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, we will need quite a lot of iron, um, 
most of the machinery will need quite a lot of it um, and also we're going to need it um, to make that steel which we are going to do by the end of this video um, and steel is important because steel gives you access to all the sort of uh, second tier uh, equipment um, in the game um, not only that once you've got the capability to make steel to be honest as long as you can find the materials you've basically got the material the capability to make any of the first tier alloys which will allow you to really make quite a lot of progress before you need an advanced furnace for the uh, the, the advanced alloys um, but uh, if you can make steel you can easily make solder very easily make solder um, in, a, in a furnace that's cooling down from making uh, steel um, and you can almost certainly with a little bit of practice make Electrum um, and uh, Constantan and if you're good at it you can probably make some Invar as well although that is a bit more challenging because you've got to get it a little bit hotter um, obviously there are techniques to doing that um, and uh, by the time you're making those you probably want a full gas processing plant so you can pre-mix fuel and you probably have some uh, chips and uh, software to control the fuel mixes and all the rest of it but um, actually just using chunks of ice it is physically possible with a bit of practice to make quite a lot um, if you've got the basic infrastructure in place. Right, that I think, I'm going to grab this uh, Volatiles because we'll need that in the furnace when we build that although we won't need very much of it at this stage um, I think that will do for now so the next problem is where's the base you can see there's a light in the distance um, so let's head back there's the lander and let's get up here right so the first thing is um, I would probably need to swap out my suit battery it's at 21% it's not too bad it drops very fast in cold environments like Europa it's not so bad on Mars um, right so I grabbed a load of coal so let's take that 20 stack I'm not going to put the 50 in and stick that in there. That's going to be our fuel source for a minute. Now we're going to start sm smelting. Um, now I know we're going to need um, iron actually but we're going to need copper for cabling first so I'm going to get that going um, over there. So the good news is we've now got the capability to make the base materials to expand the uh, expand the base. You'll see that battery's already dropped down really quite quickly. It's now at 19% and that's because smelting does use a lot of power so I'm going to flick that on and get it running now in the meantime while that's happening I'm going to go inside and I'm going to cancel that pressurize now what we can now do is to try to uh, get some atmosphere in here uh, I should have picked up some oxide while I was out and I forgot uh, the particle effect you can see looks like it's going through the window but it's not um, always just worth double checking but it's not and you can actually see the internal pressure here from um, that stack of 37 has gone up to 39 kPa and in fact if I um, I'll drop that and you'll see it will roll around the floor before it disappears um, melt another 25 and the, th the reason we wanted to get this hab sealed up early is that the sunlight's warmed it above freezing you can see it's four degrees here um, and I reckon if we can get it up to 80 kPa that's probably good enough um, we're not quite there yet um, let's uh, split another half off that stack um, and I think that'll be good enough because we need to add some oxygen to this as well um, and we'll also want to add some carbon dioxide although well, a quick way to add carbon dioxide is to uh, select your waste tank um, when you're inside here and um, just open the canister and that will flush the carbon dioxide you've breathed out into the air in here and if I pull this up now you'll see uh, we've got 85% nitrogen which is brilliant 5% CO2 that will be good for the plants almost no oxygen so we best not breathe it um, but a trace amount of pollutant um, and a reasonable amount of nitrous now nitrous we need to get rid of because it's dangerous for two reasons one it will cause us to pass out um, which is not good uh, it's an anesthetic and the other is it's extremely flammable and in fact it's an accelerant that will cause your furnaces to burn hotter than using uh, purely oxygen so we do need to get rid of that but the good news is you'll see the airlock is now actually cycling so um, we'll come out here let's get some of that iron we collected smelting um, we're going to get to work on our first machine in a minute so I'm going to take that copper and I'm going to if I can 
squeeze in there, drop that in there. And I'm just going to check that battery is at 84%. The reason I only put 20 in there was that, worst case, if I'd left that on and it had gone over 100% and it's just wasting it, I've still got some stack in my inventory. Um, so uh, whilst we're waiting, I'm going to close up those frames um, just because it will make it a little bit easier to walk around and we're going to need to do it anyway. So let's do that. Okay, so um, we're about 30 or so, 35 minutes in uh, this stage, I think. Um, I'm going to leave that one like that for reasons that will come obvious in a minute. Um, we've sealed in a hab, it's not quite breathable but it's getting up to sensible temperature. We've got the machinery we need to um, do some basic smelting. I'm now going to um, start building some of the other things we need. So um, there are two things I need to do urgently here. One I want a furnace and two I want a hydraulic pipe bender. Um, and actually I want the hydraulic pipe bender first because I need to make some filters to clean up what's in the base but I can't do that until I've got um, some gold so I'm going to split that stack of ore you can't split it once it's in an ingot but in, the, in as ore you can so always worth knowing um, and I, this will use the most amount of power um, and take the most amount of time to do gold um, so that's why I just want that to be the minimum amount. Come on, that's it, finished. There it goes, drop that in there. Okay, now I'm going to click that to start. Now a neat trick, if you want to only build one of something, or you don't want any more to auto build after this one finishes, is just move this onto another item. Then it won't continue building, otherwise it will build one, and then if the material exists it will build the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Um, the other problem we've got is we need to make sure that battery doesn't run out while that is producing because you'll see it's only at 12, 13%. If that battery runs out, it'll stop and we'll have to start all over again. Now, at the moment you might think, well, that's crazy, that's never going to run out. But it's going to go down quite fast once they start smelting as well. And you can hear my uh, my guy is feeling a little bit uh, uh, of the, the stress now of uh, being dehydrated. Um, but uh, he'll get over it. Right, now we've got some spare cable here, so uh, again, whilst we're waiting, um, I'm going to start laying in a cable here, um, because we are going to want to put another machine in there in a minute. Um, so I'll use the wire cutters to connect that on there, um, and that should go through there fine. Uh, actually, I'm going to thinking about it. Right, and I'll show you by doing this. If I cut this wire, you'll see that has just stopped. Right, this is also stopped because I've interrupted the circuit, so that was actually a bit silly of me. Um, I've now got to go back and start it again. Um, but interrupting the circuit even downstream um, will cause a momentary power outage. Um, but uh, at least you've now seen that. So we're going to run that across there like that. I'm going to carry that smelting on. I'm going to put that way over there. So I've got the health low warning, but actually my health's at 74%, so it's not that low yet, um, but it's not great. Uh, how's that battery doing? That's at 50%. My suit battery's still at 67%, so that's pretty good. Um, but, um, no, I split the wrong thing. Um, I do not want to run out of power, so I'm going to put five more coal into there, um, just so that's going up, not coming down. Once we get daylight, we'll get a bit of power coming in through that solar panel as well. Um, right, have we got anything else left to smelt? Not there, but we might have one here, so a little bit. Once this is finished smelting, I'm going to turn that off there, um, because that will save some power. The uh, arc furnace in particular does use power when it's still on standby. Um, now, while that's going, um, I forgot to get oxide, so um, let's go and see if we can find some out here. Uh, probably be light quite soon, but there's no point in wasting time. Hopefully there's some around here. You can see the sun just coming up over the horizon. That's nitrice. I'm looking for oxide, which looks very similar, but is slightly blue. Uh, there's a bit of nickel. I don't need that right now. I will do if I want to use it to make any more advanced uh, any alloys later on. Um, I can navigate by the glow of my arc furnace. 
as you can see mining at night is a bit hit and miss uh, it's really hard to see anything very far away um, right, I'm gonna get some silicon which I've just seen here um, because we'll need that in a minute so it saves a second trip um, we don't need much that will be enough Copper. We've got tons of copper, so that's always good. Um, but not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a little bit of blue oxide. You can see, it's really the sun is almost up now. Um, I should be able to see some. Oh, there was some there actually. I can say I should be able to see some much more easily once it becomes daylight. I don't need much oxide, um, but I do need a little bit. So. Um, 14 might even be enough if there's no more in the immediate vicinity. No, there doesn't seem to be. That will be fine. Okay. So, um, sunrise on Mars. Just about to see the base. I'm a bit dazzled. Um, Alright, now I'm actually going to turn the jetpack off move faster on foot than on the uh, starter jetpack um, and jump my way on here right good so in the meantime a hydraulic pipe bender has finished being built um, I'm gonna just um, get the silicon I found going through the furnace uh, right hydraulic pipe bender really similar to construct to the auto lathe I'm going to put it back to back. I'm actually just going to offset it slightly because otherwise it's very close to the wall and things are going to crash into it and probably cause all sorts of weird clipping problems. Right, so I'm definitely going to need more cable because I can't wire that up like that. Um, so let's get some cable going. Um, right, I will need to get the rest of that um, smelting in a minute. Actually, going to run a cable right along there in a moment. Right, good. Um, let's get that in there. Get that going. Probably getting a bit low on battery by now. It's still at 33%. That's not too bad. I'm going to grab another five off there. And chuck it in. My suit battery is still at 57%, which is holding up very nicely, actually. I'm impressed with that. Right, I'm going to get this starting to build a furnace. I will need um, more cable, but that can be getting on with building a furnace while I do the next bit. So uh, I'm going to connect that there, I'm going to connect that there, and actually I know I'm going to need um, some more cable in a minute. So I am going to um, connect this to a T-junction here and go that way. Um, Hunger, caution. So I know one hunger caution as well, but uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, so we're smelting up the rest of that. Um, all right. So the next thing I need is to uh, weld this, um, which I need the iron sheets in my actual hand, don't I? Um, rather than just knowing I've got them in my pocket. Um, there we go. So I've got two iron sheets left there, I'll need those in a moment. Um, I'm going to need these, but before I do I'm going to need some more cable coils. How's that going? That's only at 49%. Right, okay, I'm going to do a bit... This is a bit counterproductive because I just made them, but um, I'd rather be having stuff build than wait for a printer to finish, so um, I'll relay those later. Right, then we'll grab the welder and do that and the screwdriver and we'll finish it and there we go now we have a hydraulic pipe bender as well right now that's fantastic because what that means is if I put that in there just a bit of iron um, I'll find I haven't got enough cable to connect it so I can't do anything else until this finishes um, which is 80% um, and there's still some power left in the battery um, this is the last step I need before I've got essentially a breathable atmosphere though so um, it's why it's quite important. Um, 97, 90, come on, come on. Right, let's go and actually navigate to cable coil. Right, there we go, that's finished. So cable coil, right, whilst that's going there, I'm going to take this furnace and I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put it about there. 
uh, sort of personal preference on how you do it. You don't really need this frame on here, I just think it aesthetically looks better. Um, you'll see at the moment that looks a bit weird, it needs a bit more work. So, um, oh, I've run out of copper in there, have I? Okay, I'll grab that, put that in. If I can hit the spot, there it is. Right, so I'm going to um, weld, not weld, it's um, wrench for the first two. And then that will need two more and a weld and that will be finished. So um, that's good news. Um, right, okay, so next thing to do, let's get this connected. Power low. And there we go. Right, now, this is now connected up, so what I'm going to do with this is, before I do anything else, is I'm going to make a pollutant filter, and I'm going to make a nitrous oxide filter. Perfect, remember to turn that off. Uh, on my way past, I shall drop that in there and start it smelting, and then I'm going to duck inside. This is where we get to take advantage of the fact that we have actually got a pressurised base, and you can see it's getting a bit f foggy in here, and that's the um, nitrous liquefying in the atmosphere, um, because it's cold, um, and you can see that from on the tablet, the bottom right hand uh, icon has got the little blue bit next to it. Um, this is never actually quite going to pressurise for that reason because some of the ox the um, atmosphere has actually turned to a liquid. Um, I'll come in here, uh, basically it's cold enough that it's liquefying um, and that's what we have this for. So I'm going to put those two in there and I'll turn that on and hopefully fairly quickly you'll see the pollutants already gone um, and I'm going to melt some O2 in here. Uh, my health is not in a great state but um, all I need to do now is get the nitrous out of the atmosphere and I'm good to go. But in the meantime this is now safe for plants so I'm going to get the potato seeds and I'm going to bosh a couple in there. Potatoes take 50 minutes to grow so we'll not have them fully grown by the end of this episode. Um, but you will be able to see that they are growing. Um, for some reason this thing persistently lands upside down which is just annoying. Right, 1.9% uh, that might be enough, let's risk it. Um, so I should have some water supplies in here, I do. Uh, so let's call up this, unlock my helmet. Always keep your helmet locked because I is the hotkey to open it uh, if it's unlocked. Uh, very easy to uh, forget you're playing stationers, I think you're playing something else. Press I for inventory and die. Um, right, so pressing I, I'll open this. Oxygen is low in here, but it's breathable. It's also 8 degrees C, so it's not great, but um, it's not too bad. It's not going to kill me, it's not going to destroy my lungs. So I've managed to have an eat and a drink. My health will now start going back up. I'm going to shut my helmet and I'm going to flush it just to get rid of any remaining pollutants. Um, the other thing is it's 89 kPa in here. Um, I'm going to flush um, my waste tank as well, um, which will just give a little bit of extra CO2 to the plants and it'll probably bring the temperature up just a little bit as well because it's still quite cold in here. Um, so what I'm looking for is two things. One, the tablet, and two, the welder. And you might think, what the hell are you doing with the welder? Um, so first thing is I wanted to see whether the nitrous is out of the atmosphere. It's not quite, and I'm not going to light the welder while it is, because it may well cause a problem. Um, but as soon as that nitrous is gone, I'm going to open up the welder and just run it for a bit, because in a confined space, it'll bring the temperature up. And these plants really need to be above 15 degrees C. So they're at nine at the moment, they're not far off. Um, obviously we can build a heater, um, but uh, we don't have one yet, so uh, still just a few traces in some corners of the room. Going, going, going. Health low. I've got the health low, but it's low going up from critical, so that's fine. Right, come on, let's get rid of that last little bit. Still just a bit of it, just floating around the room. I think that'll be enough. So if I turn that on... Um, 
you can see it's producing a small amount of pollutant as well um, but if you look at the temperature you'll see it's going up um, about 0.1 degree per tick so as soon as that hits 15 I'm going to uh, shut it off I don't really want to waste too much world of fuel um, but it is a good hack for uh, a very small hab and, and warming up very very quickly um, and uh, we're getting there the sun's going down so we're going to get less uh, warming from daylight um, but once we get a room warm it does tend to stay that way so um, that's gonna be good news for our plants um, 13.8 14 and if you look at that atmospheric mix the O2 is a little bit low I might get a little bit more oxide um, but it's not bad um, it's 15 percent it should be breathable probably get a warning but it's uh, it should be breathable we really want to get it to about 20 percent um, so that's not too bad at all I mean one way I could do it is to vent my oxygen tank in here um, and then just refill from there or I could actually open the valve on the oxygen tank and just um, let that do the work right now that's gone whoops over so um, we can done with that if I turn this output here at the moment nothing will happen because this is below the external pressure but we know the external pressure is 92 if I turn that to 100 and just allow it to top up the balance with pure oxygen now I'm usually very careful with this oxygen tank because this is the easiest way to refill the suit until we've got proper gas processing uh, which is why I use oxide for most of the um, pressurization but uh, for a very small amount like this um, that will be fine um, and we're up to 18% so I think that will probably do to be honest I'm going to shut that down um, and I reckon if I open that now no warning so we now have a breathable atmosphere we have some potatoes growing um, and they are thriving towards fruiting so that's great news um, I can shut that down because that's taken everything out, so save the battery power. In fact, better than that, I'm going to take the battery and put it in there so that it will recharge with the solar power coming through the roof. Whilst I'm in here, I'm going to take my suit oxygen uh, tank and I'm going to, you can see there's a slot on there, it's really hard to get, but there we go. I'm going to get that in there and I'm going to take it back out and now let's repressurize that, I'm taking some of the oxygen from there, put it in there. So that means I've now got oxygen, I've got uh, food growing, uh, I've got breathable warm atmosphere. Um, so that's the basics of getting this bit done, but I promised you more. So let's get out there and do it. I promised you water and I promised you steel. And I'm gonna deliver. So we're gonna lock the helmet, gonna close that, we're gonna go out. Oxygen low. Oxygen I forgot. No, that was not ideal. I have just managed to lock my helmet open. That was close. Okay, just goes to show, very easy to make stupid mistakes. Uh, I think I've just about survived that. Uh, right, okay, so I did promise you more and I'm going to deliver it now, so let's get on with it. So first thing is we are going to need some of this coal um, to power the generator because we have no power at all and we're not getting much done with no power at all uh, so let's get that fired up um, right the next thing is I'm going to need some um, iron sheets only two um, but we're going to need two iron sheets and there they go one two two iron sheets Right, um, and we're going to get the welder, and I'm going to weld that furnace, and that is now functional. Um, now the other thing we need is we need an ice crusher because we're going to get some water. So for that we're going to need some gold, some copper into there. Well, luckily there's copper, there's gold. Bosch, there's a nice, nice crusher making. Um, I know I'm also going to need the silicon in there in a minute as well. Um, right now, let's turn that off. Uh, so I've got 
20 coal there. Um, I'm not going to make a huge amount. In fact, I'm going to make a really small amount. I'm going to take that 15 iron and I'm going to take 5 of that coal because it's a 3 to 1 ratio. But it will show the principle. It could just as well have been a 50 stack or 350 stacks. And it could be the ore as well as the um, smelted iron. Um, either of those are, are acceptable. So I'm just going to do that for a minute. Um, because what I need, if I open this, is I need to split. I haven't got any oxide. I need to go out and grab some more oxide. So uh, we're going to do that just about at the hour, um, but um, we are very close to being done. So ice crusher. Ice crusher is going to go in here. Um, and I am going to make some liquid pipes. Liquid pipe. Go, go, go. And I need um, one more iron sheet. And I'm going to need some more cable. That's quite enough of that. Thank you very much. Um, I'm also going to need a bottle filler. Just one of those will be fine. Right, so the water's going to come out of there at that height. Um, I'm going to bring it through there. I'm going to drop it down and swing it round and put the pipe through the wall. Bottle filler we'll need from the inside. I don't think I actually need quite as many pipes as that. I think I've made too many. Uh, definitely not going to need more cable than that, although I will probably need about that much. Um, actually, I say that, I might need one more. I might need more than one more. And that one there. I oh, know I'm going to need quite a few more because actually that's not even enough to finish the ice crusher. So I take it back, you can carry on as you were. Uh, right, so a quick uh, weld on there. I don't quite know why it does that, but sometimes it feels like it should have finished and doesn't. Um, two cable onto there. Bosh, there's our ice crusher. Um, so we're going to use that for the water ice. That can go in there probably too much and there's actually a risk there that will cause some damage but that will be fine uh, one more I think just doing a quick bit of mental uh, calculation I think that should do it now uh, so we're going to come inside we're going to grab that we're going to go in I'm going to cancel the pressurize in a moment um, go let it just equalize so I'm going to put the uh, water bottle filler on there with the pipe end connecting to the pipe I'm going to put this here and uh, no, actually three was the number I needed uh, that there and that there there we go and turn that on and if I now take the um, partly used bottle from here um, and pop that in that will fill up as soon as we've got some liquid water in there I don't need that again for a while, so let's get that out of the way. Right, so that is the water infrastructure taken care of, um, and all I have to do is come outside and turn on the ice crusher, although that is too much. Um, I am going to just do four, because with that amount of pipe and no tank connected to it, more than that is quite likely to uh, overfill it and cause something to pop. Now you can see that did produce a bit of nitrogen but we're going to basically lose that because there's no gas pipe connected. Um, that's kind of an upgrade we can do later and connect it to that top slot. But the water will get piped into that blue network and it will fill in there. Um, and you'll see it's warming up in there um, and it will continue to do that until the water's ready to come out. Now we just have one last thing to do which is to make that steel. So I'm going to go and find some oxide. Oops, I'm going to get stuck on the lander on the way. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw some on the hill 
over here. As the sun was coming up somewhere around this way. Uh, so let's see if I can find it. I do sometimes think of spending more time in stationers flying around, there we go, looking for something than I haven't got my mining belt on, so actually I need to pick that up pretty quickly um, and get it put away, um, turn the drill off, put the drill away. Right, that's all I'm doing. Obviously, if I was doing more than a uh, first hour tutorial, um, I would probably grab some more than that. Uh, but I said an hour, I, I think I've stolen a few minutes of your time at this point, um, but it's very, very close to an hour. Um, and I promised you steel, so you will have steel. Um, and we're going to get in here. Right, so how are we going to make steel? Well, we're going to do it the quick and dirty way. Um, I'm going to take one oxide and I'm going to put that in the slot. The trouble is um, I've got to do that without it melting because the sun's just come up, so that was not great. Um, get in the slot. No, get in. Oh. Right, okay. This is where it becomes a bit more of a pain. Um, let's try and do it this way. Right, and then I'm going to drag it straight from there into there. Okay, one in the slot and press that to crunch it. Right, now I'm going to take. This is going to take a little bit of doing. Um, split that in half. I'm going to split. That in half. Uh, I'm going to split that in half. No, that was too slow. Let's get out of the direct sun. It won't help much, but give me slightly longer. Right, there we go. That was what I needed. I need two ox, uh, two volatile ice and one oxide. Drag that straight in there. Um, and if I press the button, that will um, crunch it and light it. Uh, and what you'll see is the temperature in there is zooming upwards now. Um, so let's switch that. Let's grab the uh, coal um, and let's put in the coal into the slot. Five coal to 15 iron. Let that melt. Look at that. Ingot of steel. There we go. So I promised you it would be done. It is done. Um, and that's then ready to use. You can also see in the meantime that bottle's filled up with water. So that is um, a very high speed first hour to get you uh, a sealed hab with air, some crops growing, uh, some fresh uh, Martian water um, and some steel and the, two of the three starting machines. The other one to do is the electro printer which is electronics printer which is basically the same um, as building either of those but you've got everything you need at that point to do that. You've got um, some power infrastructure. Um, it will definitely need some upgrades. There's loads of things you'll want to do. You'll want to automate things, but that is enough to get you started. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I have a number of um, small guides on my channel, which you may find useful. Some of them may be out of date now. I am gradually remaking them, um, but uh, they may help you to uh, look at step-by-step -step individual things like the airlock, which fundamentally has not changed in design since the very early part of the game. Um, and I also have a number of longer form playthroughs on Mars and Europa. So I hope you found it useful and uh, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, I hope to see you on a future video.